Hi. A few years ago, I made a video on YouTube. I entitled it um, Apoluyo, Divorce Hope Website and Junk Greek, Greek Arguments. I've gotten a number of comments on the website, and I thought I would make another video that um, hopefully is clearer, goes into more detail about some of my concerns. Now, if we read the New Testament, if we read Matthew 19, Jesus says that whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and he who marries her who is divorced commits adultery. Well, there's a website called Divorced Hope, and I, someone also pointed to a book called uh, Biblical Misconceptions About Divorce and Remarriage on a, a web page. And uh, ba both of these contain the argument that the word translated divorce does not mean divorced, and it refers to sending away or putting away. Well, I would say yes, that the word literally is, is talking about sending away or, or putting away. But in the context, it is talking about a divorce. And I'll explain why this is an issue. Now, let's consider um, Matthew 19. And I'm uh, bringing up some uh, passages on my screen while I'm talking with you. So if you'll be uh, patient with me about that. I just lost one of those. Okay. Uh, now, this starts back in Deuteronomy uh, 24. You can look at Deuteronomy 24.1 for a little background. And now uh, this was written, this was, um, you know, commands given through Moses. And Moses says, <clears throat> when a man take, uh, I'm going to do King James. When a man hath, a, hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorce and give it in her hand and send her out of the house. Now, if we look at that in some of the other translations, um, Deuteronomy. Um, we'll take a look at that and we'll read the next verses after it. And this is in the ESV. When a man takes a wife and marries her, and if then she finds no favor in his eyes, because he has found some indecency in her, uh, in her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce and puts it in her hand and sends her out of the house, and she departs out of the house. And if she goes and becomes another man's wife, and the latter man hates her and writes her a certificate of divorce and puts it in her hand and sends her out of the house, or if the latter man dies and who took her to be his wife, then her former husband who sent her away may not take her again to be his wife after she has been defiled, for that is an abomination for the, uh, before the Lord, and you shall not bring sin upon the land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance. Now you can see different ways these pa the passages has been in in interpreted. Now here in the ESV and many other translations, the sense is that if a man does all these, these things, then the woman is not allowed to go back to her first husband. So it's a law against wife swapping that um, in, a, in a way, or against, you know, a woman, a man divorcing his wife, she goes off, she marries some other guy, he either dies or divorces her, and then she goes back to the first husband, that that's forbidden. Well, other, other people in the time of Jesus had looked at the Hebrew, and in the Hebrew, the way they interpret it was that there's a command here, if he's going to, um, if he did, if he finds something indecent in his wife, and he sends her away, let him get her, give her a writing of divorce. Now, so the, there are different ways of, of thinking about this passage. You could look at it as a command that if you're going to kick your wife out, you got to give her a writing of divorce and don't let her come back to the first husband. Or if you do all this stuff, then don't let her go back to the first husband. No wife swapping, no you know flipping around between husbands and going back to the other one. So uh, th this is uh, how I understand Jesus' interpretation. Jesus says that Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, allowed divorce. Now, um, we're going to take a look in Matthew 19. I'm, I like the ESV today. Um, I think I'll go with that. Some of the, I, you know, I prefer usually with Matthew 19, I usually go with uh, King James Version because it uses the word fornication. I find sexual immorality, or like the NASB says, just immorality, to be a little bit vague and not as specific as fornication in a way. But, uh, okay, now let's take a look at Matthew 19. Um <clears throat> we're going to skip a, we're going to go down to verse three and the Pharisees came up to him and tested him by asking him, is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? He answered, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And he said, 
Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. The Pharisees responded. They said to him, Why then did Moses command one to give a, a certificate of divorce and to send her away? Sounds like they're saying that God commanded the giving of the certificate of the divorce. That that is if that's what God commanded them, people to do. How did Jesus respond? He said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, Whosoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adultery. The reason I don't like the sexual immorality in, 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 translation is because I've seen people use sexual immorality to uh, refer to withholding sexual uh, activity in the bedroom for married people. And while I do consider that wrong, I don't consider it to be pornea or fornication. So I think the translation is, is very uh, vague there. And to translate that as immorality is just way too vague. But anyway, on this uh, passage, they're taking this as a command. Let them give them a writing of divorce. And then Jesus is saying that Moses allowed them to get to the, the divorce because of the hardness of their hearts. Now, there is a command in the passage. The woman's not supposed to go back to her first husband if she's been married to multiple uh, men after a divorce. So the Lord did not want that. That would defile, defile the land. It says that in the prophets as well. But um, so, so the issue is, uh, you know, I think if we read it like the ESV and some of the other translations translated, it's that if a man does this in this scenario, if the woman goes back to the first husband, that, that's forbidden. Now they're taking it as if a man wants to divorce his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Okay, so let's look at it that from that perspective. Now let's consider there's a divorce hope and this other book that I, I mentioned. There's a new kind of interpretation of divorce that's out there that says that when Jesus said um, that um, whoever divorces his wife is set for sexual immorality and whoever marries another commits adultery, the word there is actually more better translated put away. Okay, I'll concede, I agree with that, that more literally is put away, that whoever puts away his wife is set for, is set for sexual immorality and marries another uh, commits adultery. Um, so now let's, but let's consider, uh, how put away is used. Now let, um, some, now I, one of the arguments is that put away means separate. And, um, and there's another word in Greek that actually means divorce. And that the word in Greek that actually means divorce is apostasion. But the word here is apoluyo and apoluyo actually means to, um, put away. And so they, they say that means to separate. That doesn't mean to divorce. Now, this is a fuzzy area. Some people think there's a one-to-one -one translation between one word in one language and one word in another. We live in a different culture from back then. And now, like in the United States, there's legal separation. And that's where if a husband and wife are having marital problems, problems and living separately, and they want to file their taxes separately so that one is not responsible for the other's mistakes on their tax forms or whatever, they can file separately and be separated. They can be legally separated, and that's a category. Well, there's no legally separated in the Old Testament. So this this is not, they don't have separated. That's not, you know, they didn't have a little tick box back then. It's not a part of their culture. So we can't translate it into separated in that concept in English. Um, but what we can see here is that when they're talking about a woman who is divorced with a, with a certificate, they call her a woman who's put away, that, that the man had put her away. Okay, so if you send your wife out or put her away or send her out uh, with a certificate, she's a sent out woman, she's a put away woman. And we might more literally, we might better translate that as a divorced woman, because that's how we use the term. We, when we say someone's divorced, we don't say they're put away, we say they're divorced. Now, in their terminology, if somebody was put away legally, they would still say it was putting away. And we can see that in this very passage. Let me show you this. Um, <clears throat> verse 7. And they said to him, why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and to send her away? So they're referring to Apoluyo to send her away or put her away. And they're saying, Moses said to give her a certificate of divorce. She's got the certificate of divorce in the hand. That's what they're saying. You know, he's already given, Moses told the husband, they're saying, commanded the husband to give her the certificate of divorce and to put her away. So she's put away, she's kicked out of the house. She's got the certificate of divorce. She's divorced but she's put away. So we're talking about, in this context, they're asking about a woman, uh, a man marrying a woman uh, who is put away. Okay, 
um, or I'm sorry, they're asking about uh, a man putting away his wife. And Jesus says, I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another uh, commits adultery. So whoever puts away his wife, unless it's for fornication, and marries another commits adultery. So is that only talking about putting away a woman without her certificate? No. Women who are put away with a certificate are put away. Okay? It's like, um, it, this is uh, semantics, it's basic logic. Um, there are white men with mustaches. White men with mustaches are white men. Do you agree with that? White men with mustaches are white men. I think we can all agree with that, right? If you put a mustache on a white man, he doesn't cease to be a white man. This is a really, really big, dark mustache or something. But he's still a white man. Okay? Now, if you put a divorce certificate in a woman's hand and send her away, she's a woman who's been sent away. Okay? If you put the divorce certificate in her hand and send her away, you sent her away. If you put a divorce certificate in her hand and put her away, you put her away. So Jesus says that whoever puts away his wife except it be for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. He did not say, he said, whosoever, he didn't say just the ones who didn't use the certificate, whosoever puts away his wife includes the ones who put them away with the certificate and the ones who put them away without the certificate. Now, one of my irrit uh, irritations in hearing this is it really ignores the cultural context. They do take one aspect of cultural context, and that is the, that there is a problem in Judaism with men who kick their wives out and don't give them the divorce certificate. And maybe that's to keep from having some Jewish legal obligation under their uh, understanding of the law to pay or something, or maybe out of spite or whatever the reason is. Um, and uh, or, or they just don't want to get a divorce and maybe they're going to try to reconcile or whatever. I don't know. But whatever the reason is, uh, apparently that, I mean, that could have been a problem back then as well, but that's not the issue they're discussing because they bring up the passage. They bring up the passage from Moses and in the passage from Moses, the woman who is shalach, uh, shalach, who's put away, I didn't, uh, I'd have to modify that for the, anyway, it's a, that, it's a longer word in Hebrew, but the root word of it is shalach, and I may not be pronouncing that uh, exactly right, uh, the loren, uh, loren, laryngeal, or whatever sound at the end. But anyway, um, the, uh, the woman who, who is put away in that passage has a certificate of divorce also. It's the passage they're quoting here. So it's, it's very clear from the very words of the passage that whoever puts away his wife, whoever puts away his wife, put a divorce certificate in, your, in her hand, don't do it. You're still putting away your wife if you put her away. If you're sending her out saying you're not, you can't live here anymore, you can't be in my household anymore, or I'm, 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 uh, you can't be my wife anymore if you say that and you give her a certificate of divorce or you don't, you're still sending her away. Okay, so this is the, the context. Now let's consider the cultural context. Now, you can go on Google Scholar and look up theological articles on this. You can read, uh, you know, from uh, people with doctorates who write about this. Uh, apparently, I believe it comes from the Talmud, maybe the Mishnah Torah, I'm not sure. Uh, it's been a while since I've, I've looked this up. But if you, if you study it, you, you will find that there were two um, schools of thought on divorce in the time of Christ. Uh, the gen in about a generation before Christ, there were two very influential leaders in the Jewish Sanhedrin, which was their legislature and, and judicial body, the one that condemned Jesus um, to die on the cross. And they uh, were led by the high priest, and they had a, a group of, they had priests who were leaders, and they had a group of Pharisees who were leaders, and may have had some other parties or groups in there. The Pharisees were a religious purity, a legal purity group wanting to follow the Torah. Well, and also kind of the ancestor of modern Orthodox Judaism, um, so in, in a way. So uh, the main leader was Hillel, and the secondary, and another leader in the group was Shammai. Now their children, or their descendants, intermarried. Uh, I don't think they were like really at odds with each other, but they disagreed about uh, marriage and divorce because Hillel thought that a man could divorce his wife if he found something indecent in her that could be something as small as burning his supper. He, he could dismiss her for burning his supper. And then the other one, Shammai, he believed in much more serious uh, um, infractions for divorce. So he didn't believe in divorce for any cause. He believed it had to be something really serious. And they dis disagreed about this. And so there was the issue of the any cause divorce. Can a man put away his, his wife for any cause? The any cause divorce, which became the dominant view in Orthodox Judaism, is the Hillel, Hillel view. Now, if you've seen The Fiddler on the Roof, 
there's a rep they're having a conversation and there's a reference to this that Hillel Hillel taught that a man could put away his wife and maybe even mentioned burning the supper burning the bread or something uh, but it put away his wife for any reason at all and that became the or uh, the in what's called Orthodox Judaism that became the dominant view okay so this is the debate the debate is not whether a man can put away his wife and not give her a certificate these legal scholars would have been opposed to that that's in the Torah they know that they have to give the certificate, especially if they're taking it as a command, let her give her, give her a certificate. These, these uh, people that are arguing with Jesus, uh, the Pharisees, they are apparently taking this as a command that the man who divorces his wife is commanded to give her a writing of, of divorce. And perhaps Jesus is taking it, the command is not for the woman not to go back to the husband uh, or else that would defile the land, but that allowing the, that there was already kind of a context here where men were giving their wives their certificate of divorce. And if you do all this stuff, then the wife is not supposed to go back. But from the original, originally, um, two shall be one flesh. So we're going back to the original intention. Now the concession that Moses made and the command is not going back to the first husband after a woman is divorced or uh, is divorced and either remarries and he dies or divorces her again. Okay, so... Now, some, uh, if we continue reading, now, if Jesus had just said that um, if you put away your wife without a certificate, they're asking him, well, why did Moses say to give her a writing of divorce and to send her away? And if Jesus had just said, if you send your wife away without the certificate of divorce and marry someone else, you've committed adultery. Where is the controversy in that? I mean, he would just be agreeing with both sides about the any cause divorce they both would have agreed with him on that why would the disciples in verse 10 have said to the disciples said to him if such is the case of a man with his wife it is better not to marry okay why would the disciples have been so shocked if they uh if it was jesus was just agreeing with the pharisees there and if all they had to do was just give her a piece of paper and they could divorce her, and maybe there were some financial ramifications, but even so, if all they had to do was follow the already existing law that Judaism already accepted, why would they say it's better not to marry? Apparently, they were pro-marriage. Um, you know, Peter was married. Jews tended to be pro-marriage, and, and Judaism has historically been pro-marriage. Why would they have been so shocked if Jesus set such a low bar? And that the passage doesn't even make any sense if we interpret it that way. No, Jesus is saying if you put away your wife, and that includes with the certificate the way the Pharisees were actually talking to him in the actual conversation that we are discussing, and marry another, um, except to be for fornication and marry another, you, you, he, that man commits adultery. Okay, so uh, the historical or traditional view of the passage viewed it that way. Uh, people who could read Greek, who lived back in the time when this dialect of Greek was spoken, or in the centuries that followed that we actually have records of. I don't know if we have anybody from the first century who's a Christian who commented on it, except for all these comments in the Gospels. And um, But uh, they took it that way too. So um, And also Paul, uh, let not the wife... Um, or let not the wife depart from her husband. Let not the husband put away his wife. Again, we've got, we've got commands. This isn't just something that... Um, I mean, this this is is consistent throughout the Bible, throughout the New Testament, and this is a, a high standard. I know it's difficult. Now, sometimes when we're faced with a situation where a lot of people are not experiencing or not doing what's written in the Bible, there are different approaches to it. One is to try to explain the Bible to fit with our experience and the way we are, and that may mean lowering the standards of morality or lowering whatever standards down to where we're comfortable with them. The other is to say, what's wrong with us? We need to change. And I'm generally of the what's wrong with us, we need to change perspective uh, when it comes to these sorts of things. I think that's generally the right way to go. Um, and so um, I'm in the ESV again. Um, Yes, uh, to the married, I give this charge. 1 Corinthians 7.10, to the married, I give this charge. Not I, but the Lord. The wife should not separate from her husband. But if she does, should be she should be unmarried, should re remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her wife. And the husband should not divorce his wife. Okay, so there you go. Um, and, or the husband should not put, I believe it says put away his wife in the K 
King James Version. But even so, um, whether you're sending her, if you put her away with a certificate, if you put her away without a certificate, it's called putting away. Uh, it was called Shalak in, in Deuteronomy 24. It's called Apoluyo in uh, Matthew 19. The Pharisees call it Apoluyo. If you send a woman out with a certificate quoting Moses, they call that Apoluyo. They call that putting away. So putting away includes legal putting away. Putting away in the legal way with a certificate is the context that they're discussing in Matthew 19. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it's a blessing to you. If you know somebody who needs to see it, who needs, who's arguing on the other side, uh, arguing for a really loose view of divorce, then you may want to share this video with them. Now, I know there's a lot of people who've gone through divorce and a lot of people who've, who've uh, messed up or they're victims of other people who have messed up. And I don't want to bash people for being divorced. And I know people go through difficulties in life and life is not always just fun and games and everything. But also, we don't want to lower the standards of what the Bible teaches um, in order to accommodate uh, difficulties that other people have had in life. And so, um, you know, if you've sinned in this area, I'd urge you to repent and uh, get right with God. Um, if you're a, a victim in this area, you know, I, I just express that I had, have uh, empathy for you. May the Lord bless you in your walk as you walk uh, for the Lord.